Welcome everyone to today's presentation on war design for masonry veneer, presented on behalf of ThinkBrick Australia. So just some background information before we begin. This presentation will go through relevant standards regarding the design and construction of masonry veneer walls. This presentation will also go through design considerations for built-in components such as wall ties, as well as a worked example. AS 2699.1 Built-in Components for Masonry Construction Part 1 specifies performance criteria and requirements for Type A and Type B wall ties for masonry, masonry veneer, and cavity walls. AS3700 Masonry Structures specifies minimum requirements for the design and construction of unreinforced and reinforced masonry structures, including built-in components. Wall ties are designed to transfer face loads from a masonry wall to a structural frame. There are two types of wall ties. Type A, which is designed for wind loading, and Type B, which is designed for seismic loadings. Type A wall ties include cavity, veneer, and remedial ties. Type B wall ties include flexible, non-flexible, and remedial ties. Other design considerations include built-in components such as damp-proof courses, flashings, and weep holes. Dampproof courses prevents the upward movement of moisture through the masonry. Flashings prevent moisture from entering the interior from the exterior. Weep holes are provided in the exterior leaf to drain moisture from the cavity. Here are two diagrams detailing both cavity and veneer walls. Cavity walls include two skins of brickwork. Veneer walls include an exterior skin of brickwork with a timber or steel structural frame. Both walling systems require a minimum cavity of 40 mm to meet waterproofing requirements. The 1989 Newcastle earthquakes affected many brick and masonry homes, causing the outer walls to separate from the inner structure due to seismic activity. Subsequent investigation found that the durability of the wall ties was not correctly considered during design and failed due to corrosion. Thus, we must consider the durability of the wall ties. Figure 5.1 of AS3700 is a map of Australia that outlines the climate zones for different cities. We will use this figure as a component to determine the durability requirements for the wall ties. The location of masonry will also affect the durability requirements for built-in components. Locations can be broadly defined as exterior or interior environments. Exterior and interior elements must meet the following definitions shown below. Interior masonry work is subjected to the following durability requirements dependent upon ground conditions. The minimum durability classes for the following ground conditions are listed below. Marine environments are defined as areas that are 100 metres to 1 kilometre away from a non-surf coast and 1 kilometre to 10 kilometres away from a surf coast. Severe marine environments are defined as areas up to 100 metres from a non-surf coast and up to 1 kilometre from a surf coast. The minimum durability classes are specified below. Industrial environments are defined as areas that are within one kilometre from a major industrial complex, producing severe acidic pollution. R4 classed built in components shall be used for these areas. Moderate environments are areas with light industrial pollution or very light marine influence, or both. Mild environments are areas that are remote from the coast, industrial activity, and the tropics. The minimum durability classes are specified below. Table 5.1 of AS3700 outlines the durability requirements for built-in components such as wall ties for different exposure environments listed previously. These tables outline the durability classifications for masonry wall ties, manufactured from either a steel sheet or a steel wire. R0 represents a mild requirement while R4 represents a severe requirement of steel grade for the wall ties. Wall ties range from light to heavy duty. The wall tie capacities for Type A and Type B wall ties are outlined in these tables, which can be found in AS3700 and AS2699.1. For wall ties, specific detailing requirements shall be met. They shall be embedded at least 50 mm into the mortar joint and have at least 15 mm of cover from any exposed surface. They shall be spaced up to 600 mm in each direction, and they shall be adjacent to horizontal and vertical lateral supports, 
control joints and around openings of the masonry. To increase the war tie capacity, we can use higher duty war ties or we can double the number of war ties in the same location as shown in the diagram on the right. The ultimate strength limit state of the war ties is shown in the equation, where FTD is the design compressive or tensile force, phi, which is the capacity reduction factor, and FT, which is the strength of the tie based on its duty rating. A flexible backing is defined as a timber or steel frame. The design compressive or tensile force shall be taken as 20% of the total tributary lateral load on a vertical line of ties between horizontal supports. A stiff backing is defined as a masonry wall or concrete wall. The design compressive or tensile force shall be taken as 1.3 times the total tributary design lateral load acting on the tie. We will now go through a worked example for a stiff and flexural backing. This example requires us to design an exterior wall with a stiff backing. A total out of plan loading of 1 kPa in compression is acting on the wall. The wall is 2.7 meters high using full bedding of M2 mortar. The wall is 3 meters long and is located in Canberra. Determine the spacing and capacity of the wall ties. Located in Canberra, the exposure environment is classified as mild temperate as shown in figure 5.1 of AS3700. As highlighted, R1 war ties shall be used for the construction of this exterior wall. The capacity reduction factor is assumed to be 0.95, which is obtained from table 4.1 of AS3700. As the ties will experience a compressive force due to the compressive out of plane loading, we will trial medium duty ties, which have a compressive strength of 0.72 kN. Using a spacing of 600 mm, we find that five wall ties can span horizontally and vertically. This shall be used as a guide when determining the placement of the wall ties. Wall ties shall be positioned adjacent to any horizontal and vertical lateral supports, control joints, and around openings in the masonry. The first row of ties shall be located within 300 mm from the line of the lateral support, control joint, or perimeter of the opening. The factored medium duty wall tie capacity is calculated to be 0.68 kN. For a stiff backing, the design compressive force shall be 1.3 times the total tributary design lateral load acting on the wall tie. The design compressive force is calculated to be 0.47 kN. As the design compressive force is less than the factored wall tie capacity, medium wall ties spaced at 600mm is okay for use. This example requires us to design a wall for a single story house, this time with a flexible backing. The parameters of the wall shall remain the same. The wall tie positioning remains the same compared to the stiff backing worked example. Wall ties shall be positioned adjacent to horizontal and vertical lateral supports, control joints, and around openings in the masonry. The first row of ties shall be located within 300 millimeters of the lateral support, control joint, or perimeter of opening. Trialing medium duty wall ties, the factored wall tie capacity is calculated to be 0.68 kN. Design compressive force shall be taken as 20% of the total tributary lateral load on a vertical line of ties between horizontal supports. Hence, the design compressive force is calculated to be 0.32 kN. However, we must do another check. Wall ties shall be designed to resist two times the design compressive force for the following locations shown. As we are designing a single story house, the design compressive force for a row of wall ties at the top is calculated to be 0.65 kN. As the design compressive force is less than the factored wall tie capacity for both of these cases, medium duty wall ties spaced at 600 mm is okay for use. The association has also curated design manuals that provide information on wall design for brick veneer, including details on built-in components and further worked examples. The association also offers a wide range of free resources available to the public, such as technical manuals, research papers, and case studies. 
The association also has a technical hotline where we can answer any of your brick or block related inquiries. Should you have any questions about the design and construction of brick or blocks, please feel free to give us a call on the technical hotline. This concludes the War Design for Masonry Veneer presentation. Thank you for your time, and we hope you enjoyed today's presentation.